Now when you look at this, this is Pennsylvania right here, man. I love this. I know, I know that there's more geographically impressive places to ride a motorcycle, but I do love Pennsylvania. This is the state that I call home, and the, for whatever reason, it just makes me feel good to be rocketing through the gentle rolling hills of western Pennsylvania. It's where I truly feel at home. Hey everybody, John Pleskina here, and I have no idea if my moto vlogging rig is even working right now. Uh, over the long weekend, I had recorded a couple of videos that I wanted to have on YouTube today, and none of it turned out quite right. On a lot of it, the audio wasn't working, and then on the rest of it, there were some grease smudges or something. I, I don't know why. I guess I had I hadn't washed my hands before I was messing around with my GoPro and there were smudges all over the lens of the camera. And so nothing looked quite right. Lots of it didn't sound quite right. And so I had to just abandon it. It's too bad. Uh, some hopefully interesting content. I have no idea if this is actually going to end up on YouTube or not. But since I'm testing out, I'm trying a different microphone. To see if that helps with the audio problems that I've been having and a different GoPro adapter. GoPro just, I don't think they're even trying. They they can't seem to get their audio adapters right. They're always a hassle and at a drop of a hat the camera is going to go back to recording either no audio at all or audio through its own internal microphone. Whereas uh, I'm using an adapter to try and get it to work with the lavalier microphone that I've got inside my helmet. So I can bring you guys, my wonderful YouTube audience, with me out on the road and you hear my voice and not just wind noise. But since we're out here, let's talk a little bit about the Patriot Act. That was what one of the videos that I shot over the weekend was going to be about. We have some drama going on recently. And uh, Hold on, I need to pay attention at this intersection. There was some drama going down recently because amendments are being introduced to the Patriot Act and voted on, and there was an amendment to give law enforcement agencies warrantless access to people's browser history and search results data. And I believe that that amendment failed to pass by a single vote and that it was a near thing. If the article, if I remember the article that I had read for my prep over the weekend right, there was another congressman who would have voted yes for it who just couldn't be there on the day of the vote and what a lucky day for us, assuming that it doesn't ultimately end up back on there. Now there are a few senators including Rand Paul and maybe a few others who are also trying to introduce some amendments to maybe introduce some oversight to the way that the FISA courts operate and so on. And that's good to see. It's a lot better than nothing. We could just as easily have nothing. But isn't it sad how nobody is making the case that we should just allow the Patriot Act to expire? Now, if you weren't around or if you don't remember, one of the reasons why the Patriot Act was tolerated was because we were told that it was a temporary measure and it actually does sunset every few years and it takes a, it has to be voted and signed into law again in order to remain in effect. And now here we are at least 15, maybe 20 years after the initial passage of the Patriot Act. And not only is it still going, nobody is making the case that we don't need it anymore. And spoiler alert, you will probably never see that. Good old Ronald Reagan, Ronaldus Magnus, he said, the closest thing that there is to eternal life is a government program. And that's quite obviously true. They, once they have new power, they never want to let it go. 
I mean, the income tax was originally passed as a temporary measure. It was something like 1% or 2% in the highest bracket. And it was solely to fund war. And after the war was over and we got the war debts paid off, then boy howdy, we were just going to repeal that income tax and you'll never have to worry about it again. And we see how that goes. Once they had it, they never wanted to let go and they expanded on it and it became not just a way to raise revenue for the government, but a way to enact social justice, whatever that means, by levying some kind of equity between the rich and the poor with a graduated income tax scheme and all kind of nonsense that the people who originally had to suffer under the income tax would never have accepted if it had just been foisted on them all at once. But that's the nature of how power corrupts our republic. And now I've seen also some articles floating around about how the European Union is getting ready to put into place some kind of vaccination passport, essentially documents like your driver's license or something that you're going to have to be able to show on demand for who knows what, maybe to work or travel, to show that you've been vaccinated for all the proper diseases. And in case you're thinking that, well, that's probably just some kind of emergency response to what's been going on with COVID, it turns out that they had feasibility studies in place for this for at least a couple of years now. And the COVID crisis is just what they're going to use to try and shill that into place if they can. And once they have that, they're never going to let it go. That'll be another freedom completely lost. Now, I'm not a hardcore anti-vaxxer. I don't run around advocating that people don't get vaccinated. I'm, sur I'm a musician and uh, an, a science fiction author. And a, and a software engineer. There are many things that I'm educated on, many things that I'm talented at, but healthcare isn't one of those things and I'm not going to try and tell you what I think you should do for your health. And certainly the logic behind vaccines makes a lot of sense and the polio vaccine, for example, was great. We were able to pretty much eliminate a very dangerous and deadly disease. Now, on the other hand, the United States certainly has the busiest vaccination schedule on the planet and I don't necessarily believe that the people who work at our as our federal overlords at the great federal leviathan are just so concerned about our health that they want to make sure that our bodies are protected against every single disease. I'm sure that that's because of the nature of the power of big pharma and its ability to lobby itself new powers and uh, it's creepy you know tell me if you would buy a car under these circumstances there's actually a law in place that if you experience health problems with a vaccine you actually can't sue the vaccine manufacturers I know that sounds far-fetched but it's actually true so Vaccines are actually injected directly into your body, and they are something that I would recommend using caution, and uh, that you should take a lot of thought and care into deciding whether or not you really need to be vaccinated against something. But more and more we're seeing this push, both through peer pressure and in some cases even through legislation to try and make vaccines mandatory. and. Although I'm not against the concept of vaccines in theory, the government doesn't own your body. It should be your decision and the decision of parents what gets injected into your bodies and the bodies of your children, and not some bureaucrat who's probably getting paid off by the big pharmaceutical corporations anyway. So it's sad to see these things evolve. And It's sad to know that it's very unlikely that as these steps forward into greater and greater government power over the individual, it becomes more and more unlikely that we're going to take steps backwards again. The only hope that we have for that is that individuals will eventually get sick of it and, and stand up and demand to get some of their individual liberties back. And I just don't see that happening. You know, I, I remember 
shortly after 9-11 when we all thought temporarily we would have to deal with the extra security at the airport and temporarily we would have all these extra security me uh, measures through the Patriot Act and these secret courts. I don't think anybody really thought that this stuff would still be in place 20 years later, just like nobody believed that the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq would still be going on 20 years later. But these are dark times. And it is a harsh world out there, my friends, as we know. So that's all I got for now. Uh, I hope to be coming at you with some more stuff. Whether I get my motor vlogging rig working correctly today or not, I'll try and come at you with some more content here pretty soon. But otherwise, keep thinking, my friends, and keep riding motorcycles through the harsh world. And we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.